every problem has a spiritual connotation to it. Every single problem you face, no matter how minute it is. And so you must learn when you're dealing with a problem as a Christian to identify the spiritual source. The Bible says, the Bible says that after, and I'm giving you scenarios, after the Israelites came out of bondage 430 years, they went into another bondage 70 years. Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, Cyrus, and the rest. Now, please understand what happens. After 70 years of bondage, Nehemiah and Ezra, by the Spirit of the Lord, realize their time to be released comes. There's a king called Cyrus holding them. Now, Nehemiah goes to Cyrus and shows him that he's in scripture. He doesn't say, let's rise up and fight the, the captives. Eh? He says, no. He goes, shows him that he's in scripture. Isaiah 45. Come here, Isaiah 45. You know it. And scripture says, <coughs> it says, that says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus. This is almost 400 years before Cyrus was born. Yes. Nehemiah and Ezra by the spirit, especially Ezra, Ezra chapter 1, comes to, comes to Cyrus, shows him this is you. Cyrus, then the Bible says, Ezra chapter 1, that moved by the Spirit. Take me, Ezra, Ezra chapter 1. I have to use a lot of scripture to prove myself, because I'm a teacher, eh? Ezra chapter 1. Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus. He stirs it up. Then, just like it had been decreed in Isaiah 45, this guy just goes along with it. No battle, nothing physical. That's the connotation of scripture. Not by might, Amen. not by power, Amen. but Amen. by the Amen. spirit. Amen. Now that is true for every auntie that is doing witchcraft. Amen. Huh? Amen. Okay, I have, to, I have to touch this. Because I sense it, I know. I have met people. When things are not moving, your first thing is, maybe my auntie or my judge somewhere cast me. Yeah? Now, hear what the Spirit of the Lord says. Numbers chapter 22 and verse 1. Numbers 22 and verse 1. I really want to get somewhere. And the children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab on this side Jordan by Jericho. So, the children of Israel, led by Moses, pitched in Moab. Yes? yes? Verse 2. And the Bible says, And Balak the son of Zippo saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. So he's been keeping track of their history. Next verse. And Moab was so afraid of the people because they were many. Now, <laughs> I'm speaking in parables. Eh? <laughs> but you see, often people who are in position of physical strength fear numbers. Especially when they've kept track of the history and the things that the numbers are doing. So what does he do? This is Balak, a king of Moab. He doesn't say, let's raise up an army and kill these guys. He looks from amongst the people, a prophet who he can use to curse the people. <laughs> I'm speaking in parables. <laughs> so he, he, he doesn't say let's go because he has power, he has an army, he has everything. But he knows, having kept track of the history, that there's something spiritual here, yo. So let me try to sort it out spiritually. Because somehow, Balak, don't joke with him, was a spiritual man. Because he knew, he knew that if he came against them physically, he would lose. Yes. So what does he do? He goes, he looks for someone 
who is of the same mold and says now speak and curse Numbers 23 and verse 23. Now this is the Lord's message to you. Yes. 23 verse 23. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Yes. Put that in your name. There is no enchantment against yes. And he says is there, is there any divination against Uganda? Yes. Then he says according to this time it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel what has God wrought? Give me, give me, give me the message version. Give me a message. No magic spells can bind your name. No incantations can hold back Uganda. I says people will look at you and Israel and say, "What a great thing God has done." Rabbi, maybe my grandmother is the one. Maybe I had an auntie. No incantation against you. <laughs> ah! Okay, now let me start teaching. Because I had to I had to get you into the right. Every no your weapons are not carnal. They are spiritual. The Lord can take you, your issue can be one person away. You sort out that cup person, that cup punk. <laughs> Sometimes it's an atmosphere away. Now, <laughs> you guys, eh? let's go now. Let, let me teach now. The Bible says, the Bible says that Adam was created. Now, when Adam was created, he was created in the flesh, but it was not his beginning. And I've always stood by the fact that in Genesis chapter 1, God says, the Bible says, male and female, he created them. That chapter, actually chapter 2, chapter 1, happened in the spirit. Chapter 2, God now forms. Now, we know according to scripture in Psalms chapter 33 and verse 6, that God breathed out all the heavenly hosts. He created them. That's something that happened in eternity before time. Your spirit was amongst those. Amen. You are older than what you are. Amen. Let it say amen. amen. Let it say amen. amen. Now, <laughs> now, hear me carefully. What we see in Genesis chapter 1 is a creation of the body, the house of Adam, but not of Adam. When God breathes into, actually the entire Genesis chapter 1 is the transfer from heaven to earth. Yes. Ah, you guys. Eh? Chapter 1, chapter 2, transfer from heaven to earth. A man that is spirit enters a body. But God then gives him dominion over all the earth. Yes? yes. Gives him dominion over all the earth. But the Bible is specific. It says that man was created from what? from the dust of the ground. Now, we are in an age of dominion, meaning it is the desire of the Lord to reconcile and redeem everything that the devil has taken. Yes? Yeah, amen. That is where we are now. Amen. But please hear me carefully. I know that there are people out there knowing the calls that are upon their lives and the dreams that they have in their heart whose desire is to dominate Christians. But the principle in scripture is that God said go and dominate the earth. First Adam has to rule himself. Because he's created from that material. A man who does not rule himself cannot rule. Listen to me. Listen. The Bible says, the Bible says, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 32. What does it say? 
It says, he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. He that rules his spirit than he that takes a city. That means you can be Napoleon, conquer the entire city, but if you can't control anger, in the eyes of God, you're not better than a person who's simply patient. <laughs> now, now, hear me carefully. There is a government that God is going, trying to instill on earth. But it first starts by the governing of yourself. Huh? Okay. Let's go, let's go deeper. In the spirit, there are things that have weights. Your spirit has weight. Whether you believe it or not. Proverbs 16 verse 2. The ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs. Your spirit is weighed. It is weighed. We know it is weighed because we see a portion of it in scripture. The Bible says that a hand appears and writes on the wall. You have been weighed and found wanting. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Eh? In the spirit, there are things that actually weigh more than other things. Jesus coming, Matthew, in the book of Matthew, he comes to the Pharisees and he says, you have forgotten the weightier things of the law. And he's referring to law. Then he mentions them, faith, justice, mercy, and so on and so forth. He refers to them as weightier. Now, Scripture actually gives us definitions of things that are actually weighing more than others. It says a good name is more to be had than all riches. It doesn't say riches is not bad. Is, is bad eh? But it says a man with riches absent of a good name weighs less. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Okay. And even you see on a lower level that name could be could refer to a good name could refer to something like character. Yes. On a higher level, there is only one good name. He says, My people who are called by my name. That name is more precious than all riches. And you have it. Amen. There are things in the spirit that weigh more than others. A man can have power, dominate the earth. But he that has character weighs more. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. How do you rule an entire earth when you can't govern your own self? 